by Nicole. So next up, we're going to talk some more about a fly white rabbit, which will be named maybe Richard Buckus. We'll see. Um, next, we're going to talk more about VR, specifically about tackling VR as an indie dev. And to join me on stage will be the co-founder of Temple Gates Games, Teresa Derringer. Please come on up, Teresa. Oh my God, get on up here. Thank you so much for joining hey, me. Great to chat. Also a uh, creator of Cannon Brawl. That's right. Oh, we have so much to talk about. So we've spent the last 20 minutes in VR. We're following the White Rabbit, but there's so much more. You are an indie dev. Why don't you share a little bit of your background with folks and then we can just, just gonna dive in. Sure, um, my background is I've been doing game development for about a decade. Um, I got my start with Maxis and worked on a bunch of cool games, yes. Spore, SimCity, The Sims, Godfather. And I broke out as an indie developer uh, about four years ago and made a game called Cannon Brawl. Congratulations. Thank you. Freedom. Yes, yeah, it's a totally different experience. Yes. Totally crazy to go indie. Um, and I had a lot of fun with it. And then now I'm doing full-time VR indie game development. So that's a, that's a big leap, but let's talk about games first. So what do you love, just broadly? Like, what do you love? What, what games inspire you um, to create and just to be, or just to enjoy? Um, I love RPG-style games. Yes. I love yes. loot. I just like, I can't, I just need to like collect everything and try everything out. Um, I love those moments in a game where you find something and you try something that you think might work and it fulfills your expectations. Mm -hmm. The thing does what you kind of wanted it to do and you get that magic moment between the developer and like the player, sure. you know, as a player or the developer. Um, the that, communication. Yes. Like they put, they put that message in a bottle and you open the bottle and there it actually worked. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and I love strategy games. I love, um, one of my favorite games is Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, of course, a yeah. amazing game. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, um, I just love games that, it, like a lot of times the games I like will be delivered like, um, like fun, bright, punchy games that, that follow through with a deeper strategy. Mm -hmm. So um, they're attractive to a large audience. Yeah. But, Are um, you saying easy to play, difficult to master? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. Like games that are welcoming, like games that don't just like sort of push you out and say this is not for you. Yeah. Um, but then you get surprised with a, a depth. S sounds like well-tuned games. Yeah. Right? Like definitely. games that, that, that onboard you well. So obviously that's something that I hope you are now, of course, bringing to yeah. indie game design. So, yeah. so does that inform your design style? Tell us about, yeah, tell us about your style now as a creator. What are you bringing to the medium and, and also what brought you to VR? Oh, um, sure. Well, let's see, there's a lot there. I know, I know, <laughs> but we, we've got time. This is games beat. Yeah, um, well, so with, with Cannon Brawl, um, I worked with uh, Pete Engstadt, who I'd met uh, working at Maxis, and um, we made a game that was an artillery RTS, so it was... Um, what platform? Oh, um, that's on Linux, uh, Mac, and PC, and it's coming to uh, PlayStation and Xbox soon. Cannon Brawl, okay, yes, yes. okay. Yes, so you should play, it's online multiplayer, it's super fun, find me on Steam. Yes. Um, and that game was this really fun sort of mashup of like Worms meets Starcraft. So okay. it's frenetic, it's frantic. It's... Worms meets Starcraft, that's, <laughs> okay, God, I'm, okay, now I've, I have not played Cannon Brawl, but I need to play Cannon Brawl. Okay, you now you got, okay, play with okay, I'm in it, yes. Yeah, um, and, um, Pete uh, took a lot of the design on in that game, and just we just made a game that we we wanted to exist. Yeah. That didn't quite exist in the world. Um, it was like a, you know a lot of the pieces we saw in different games, but we sort of mashed them all into one game, and we had a lot of fun with it. Um, Which is indie, like so. I don't know what indie. So for me, what indie means is having the the freedom inside your house to decide what goes in the game, right? Yeah. And then when you don't have that then you're not indie anymore. Yeah, well, there's a lot of different ways that people can I, like define what it is to be indie, and I think it's getting really complex. Now. Another one of my favorites is if you have an IT person, you're no longer indie. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, I mean, probably not, because like if you're indie, chances are you're a really small team, maybe it's just you. Yeah. And like, I mean, you do have an IT person, it's yourself. Yes. If you have someone that that's like, I mean, I think that this is getting out of the fact that if you have any specific person who has one very specific role, you're probably getting away from being indie, okay. because if you're indie, you probably are just wearing all the hats and doing everything yourself, and if you call yourself an IT person, like, um, yeah. 
There, I'm just exploring. <laughs> um, so, so do you? So, as a creator, um, obviously, there's the products that are the major ones. Do you game jam a lot? Like, what is it day oh day in God. day out to be an indie dev? Yeah, um, I am a serial game jam competitor. Uh, I love game jams. I love the fact that you. I mean, like, if you're doing a game jam, you're probably on an extremely small team. Maybe it's just yourself. You have to do everything, and you have a huge uh, time crunch. Like, usually game jams are like 48 hours, or they're one week. For people at home who have not game jammed, they are super fun, and they're probably local to wherever you are. And as described, it's usually a concentrated period of time and a theme. Like, yes. so 24 hours or 48 hours around a theme of some kind. Yeah. Yeah, um, game jams are this fantastic opportunity to sort of, like, break off and make this like modular little prototype thing that maybe you've had cooking up in your head or maybe just take on the theme and just find out what you're inspired, um, where your inspiration takes you. Um, and it's a fantastic way to just kind of depart from whatever bigger projects yeah. you're working on because in, in your bigger projects you probably have a lot of problems that are hard because that's why you still have them and you haven't solved them already. And yeah, game champs are just a way to sort of divorce yourself for a moment and have a fun time. And a lot of times I think Game jams can be a way to um, find your next game design. Yeah. You know, so I do Ludum Dare um, a lot. I do Global Game Jam. Uh, awesome, which is in January coming up soon, last weekend of January. And it's definitely wherever you are, uh, globalgamejam.org, there's a site. Yeah, and it's a great opportunity to work with new people, too, yeah. and, and take on a huge risk. Because if you don't like working with them again, it's like, well, that's OK. That was just the game jam. Yes. Moving on. So you've now decided to pursue VR. Mm -hmm. So you're not, this is not derivative work. You are like, I am forging ahead. Yep. So what inspired that decision, what, you know, to do it, and how is it for you? Well, that decision basically came out of Game Jam. So recently there was the Oculus VR Jam. Um, oh, right on. Yes. And I was working on this, like, at the time I was sort of starting to work on this, like, sushi-making RTS game craziness. Sushi-making RTS game? I already love it. What is it called? It doesn't have a name yet. Okay. Because I sort of abandoned the project yes. because the game jam, the VR game jam came up and um, me and some of my co-working uh, space mates decided to work together. And we ended up making a game called Bazaar. And that ended up being a winner in the Oculus VR jam. Congratulations. So much fun. We were all, we just fell in love with making VR games and just seeing what you could do with this new platform. So we're all just full time on it now. And we officially made our our game company around this. Uh, we are Temple Gates Games. Congratulations. Yes. Wait, say it slowly so people can follow. Oh. Temple Gates Games? Yeah, Temple Gates Games. Is that the, also the URL, templegatesgames.com? Yes. OK, awesome. OK. Yes. And is that also your Twitter? Uh, temple underscore Gates. Temple underscore Gates. OK, all right. There's a character limit. Right. Twitter, you know. Okay. So, so, so you're launched, OK, in VR. So tell us something about the, what is the unique uh, I don't know, what are, what are the truths? What are the truths of Temple Gates games? Truth. Oh my gosh, that sounds so important. Um, it is, it is, right? There has to be a compass as a creative organization. Yeah, uh, well, um, I think that going on this wild journey of doing VR development, we've learned that it is really hard. You are working in a medium that is full of unsolved problems, especially UI-wise, especially interactivity-wise. Um, and so we've just kind of run with some of the problems that we've had um, as far as like what, like how do you get the player to look where you want them to look? Oh. It, you know, it, for tutorial moments on a traditional game, you, you have the player's um, undivided attention at a, a screen that's a rectangle in front of their eyes and they're probably looking at it. Um, so you can just put whatever you need them to see on that rectangular space. But in VR, you have 360 degrees of visual freedom. You don't know where they're looking. Um, they could be looking anywhere at any time. And you can't put your tutorial everywhere, because what does that even mean? You know? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so we've had to come up with a bunch of crazy solutions. Um, one thing we did was we put the UI in the stars, in the constellation. So all your inventory is represented by different glyphs in the sky. Okay. And you just grab whatever you need out of the sky. Um, at any moment once you've collected it. So, I mean, it's, as a designer, it's this crazy new frontier, not to overload that metaphor that seems to be thrown around a lot. Hey, look, every talk today, we, I think we've touched on taxonomy. <laughs> and it seems like you are exploring a taxonomy of UI and UX yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, how do you, two questions, I guess. One, what are, 
the barriers to becoming a VR developer, like, because most people don't even know, they might be like, I want to express myself, but I don't know, is it, I just need a Samsung gear and a computer? Like, what, what did you, what surprised you maybe that you need to have hmm. in order to even begin to explore? And then how do you contextualize your exploration? Like, are you doing a lot of user testing? Are you talking to other developers? Or is it in your own mind, your, you know, your own authored voyage? Um, gosh, uh, that's a big, lot of questions. Um, no, okay, okay, let's do the first one first. So the first, first one, one first, barriers to entry. Yes. What did you need to get? Like, I want to be a VR indie today. What do I go to Best Buy and get? Well, the first thing you need to do is get a VR headset, uh, HMD, head-mounted display. And right. there's a bunch of different solutions that are cropping up. Um, the one that I'm working it with um, the most right now is the Samsung Gear, which is a partnership between Samsung and Oculus. Mm -hmm. And Nicole, who was just chatting, she was also working with that. So yes. you got a chance to see hers. That's, that's kind of the idea. Um, and that is a really... Um, great headset. It's um, a reasonable price point. I think they announced that they're going to be launching at $99 mm -hmm. next month. Um, so for developers like me, you can get, I think they have it called an innovator edition, which is just getting it sort of before the main launch. Um, and you can get other headsets. So I've got um, the Oculus, um, the DK2, Oculus Rift, um, and the Vive, and the uh, Morpheus with the Sony VR. So you're advanced. You're immersed in the media. You are, <laughs> you're okay, got it. You've, yeah. got, you've got all the platforms, yes. as it were. Yeah, and one thing that I'm doing, my team is doing that's a little bit non-traditional is that um, we're not using any prepackaged engine. So we have written our own engine, oh, okay. which is crazy town. But the cool thing about that is that we can do concurrent multi-platform development. And so every change we make is working on all the headsets that we're developing for without having to do any special porting process. Got it. But, but if and. you don't want to go crazy town like yeah. like what we're doing, um, I know that like Unity is a great um, engine solution, sure. and a lot of people are getting involved with VR. Sure. So it's like breaking down the barrier to getting in. So yeah. that's okay. So that's one part. So now people, if you want to get in, don't no excuses. Unity, Samsung Gear, mm -hmm. and get a phone. You don't need a phone plan, do you? you just get the phone, right? Cute. But you should, do you use your own, use your own fan? So do you use yeah. your own personal phone as also your development phone? Yeah. Welcome to Indie Life. Like, I'm there is no barrier between okay. business and personal all life. All fair. All fair. <laughs> um, so that's one question. So people can do that today if they want to be a dev. So two, so exploring, yes, your taxonomy of UX, UI. Are you mostly driven by authored experience, user testing, or the shared community of shared knowledge and best practices that I assume exists? I mean, historically, as a developer, I would totally say, you know, you want to plug into the repository of community knowledge. Um, and there's a lot of that documented on the internet for many platforms. But for VR, it's so new. Yeah. Nobody, everyone's rushing right now to solve the problems. Um, we're all sort of inventing the wheel in tandem, which okay. is this weird, um, maybe not so efficient uh, way to develop, but at the same time, there's a race to be first to market and get our products out there, so we can't wait for someone else to solve the problem. Sounds like Civ. <laughs> yeah. And we all haven't discovered it together. We're all like, <laughs> yeah. we're like, try reams. Yeah. <laughs> but the coolest <laughs> moment is that when you, when you do come to a solution and someone else is coming to that same solution, yes. you're like, okay, at least we're kind of on the, on the same track or the right track, or hopefully. Sure. It's, it's evolving so quickly. Um, but what, what's exciting about it, as, as a developer right now doing this um, new platform, it's, it's, it feels impactful. It feels like the, the solutions I'm coming up with are helping other developers, you know, if I can document them. And I put my solutions on my development blog, which is templategesgames.com. But anyway, um, go slower. What oh. is your blog? templegatesgames.com. Awesome, okay. So we put our solutions on there, and we are looking at other peer developers, um, their blogs and stuff. But you, you also just have to solve things on your own. The game you're creating right now, I no secrets, world premiere, but is it single player? I've heard a lot of people focused on single player experiences. It is single player. So okay. I love multiplayer games. Yes. I think they're a great way to connect with people. But right now, developers have a problem. There is not a wide market for VR. There hasn't, I mean, it's all just coming out right now. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are going to develop for VR, you're taking a huge risk on already. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to limit your players to having to have a friend uh, also have a VR headset, I mean, you're just kind of making it hard for yourself. Jeez. So hopefully- Hyper niche. Hyper niche. Hyper niche. So hopefully, you know, in you know, six months a year, that's going to be no problem. But right now, I'm making a single player game. OK. What do you, you want people to know about what's on the horizon 
from your studio? What is what is in the shared universe? Well, um, Bazaar is yes. launching uh, Black Friday next oh, month. Oh, so. wait, so now? So yes. what is it all about? What the <laughs> secret? Let's leak it out, Bazaar. For everyone home, what is the, wait, first, how do you spell it? Uh, it's spelled B-A-Z-A-A-R. Oh, it's like a bazaar. Yes. Okay, gotcha. So yes. bazaar. Okay, not bizarre. But it's also kind of bizarre. Well, tell us more. What is this experience? So the game is a puzzle labyrinth um, sort of adventure, and you are flying on a magic carpet uh, through this mystical land. It's a procedurally generated sort of maze, and you have to... Um, collect things, collect loot, like I love loot, and yes. um, you can use that to solve puzzles, deal with enemies, and deal with traps, and explore the world, and sort of like resolve the, the mystery. I don't want to do too many spoilers. I don't want to do too many spoilers. However, you are the designer of Bazaar. <laughs> and so you are out there talking to future Bazaar players who will be having their first device, their first experience, yeah. and so I'm sure if they had one <laughs> non-super hyper spoilery hint from the designer, that might be a cool thing for them to take with them. Can you give them anything? Oh, sure. I mean, it's basically this sort of like Technicolor adventure that explores ancient Assyrian mythology. As and, you do. Yeah, you know, like you do. And um, you can prepare yourself some, for some really interesting visual tricks. We hid um, monoscopic experiences in the stereoscopic game. and um, Tell people what that means. So you can uh, have a telescope, for example, yeah. and you have to actually shut one eye in the headset in order to look through what? the telescope. Look at you, taxonomy yeah, and mechanics. Of cool so one's invented yeah. mechanics. So in case you don't know, the origin, the matriarch of... <laughs> 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 of this mechanic. We're, no, well, this is real talk, right? This is real talk. That is that is happening, like, November. Yeah. Um, okay, that's super cool. Yeah. Um, what else, what other types of fun? Oh, my God. What other aesthetics? Because we're not going to worry about the mechanics, because that's just, you know. Sure. What are the aesthetics that people who play Bazaar are going to experience? Well... We kind of ran, so this game um, is, is gaze-based controls, um, and that helps us be more platform ag agnostic. Gaze-based um, means no hands. No hands. Sorry. Okay. No hands. hands I actually free. had a, a play tester yesterday who was eating sunflower seeds while she played, and it was like, oh, you can do that because you don't have any uh, controllers on your hands. Okay. Um, gaze-based. I got to learn the terms. Is that, is that actually, is that your term or is that everyone's term? Mm, I'll go with it. Gaze-based. I'm with you. It, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but um, we did lots of fun things, like, for example, um, you can get a monkey that will land on your head. It's crawling on these laundry lines. It lands on your head, and you have to actually shake your head to shake the monkey off. Otherwise, it steals your items. Ah. Um, and we did things like, you know, you have to, like, nod as the genie is, like, telling you what to do. You nod to accept that you understand your tutorials or you accept a quest. Um, so there's a lot of things that you do with your head motions. I mean, besides just looking into the stars. Okay, I'll tell you your... what, this is so awesome for me. Sorry. Yeah. I'm just oh, no. It. Okay, so I always thought that... Um, when Nintendo Wii came out, that there'd be a new set of designers, um, and I call them Wiimotos, that don't bump, right, who didn't want to do buttons, okay? But you actually are living, like, you, you, right, you're there, like, in your, in your gaze-based interface, yeah. where you're like, oh, no, there was an entire mechanic experience to drive these, you know, aesthetics, to create these things. Anyway. Yeah. Um, which are around your head yes. as a... I don't know what sort of controller your head is, but it's some kind, you know what I'm saying though, it's like on a sort of like, your head's connected to your neck, and it goes like this, and you can also gaze, and, and now you can also. Yeah, and I guess I didn't mention the most important sure. thing, okay, sure. is like, you know, you're on a flying carpet, and you're steering it with your head. Got you're it. You're steering it with your gaze, so you just look where you want to go, and you just go there. Um, it's actually this weird thing where when you, um, like traditional games that are on a screen, a lot of times the UI um, is an abstraction between yeah. what would happen in, in the real world and then uh, communicating that to the player. But with VR, you can just get rid of that abstraction sometimes. You just say, look where you want to go, and you can just make it happen. Well, that brings us to the end of the talk. So we need to know where you want people to go. So right now, I can't wait till Black Friday. What do I do? I go to your website. How do I engage with Bazaar? Um, so we will be on the Oculus Store. Okay. Um, Congratulations. And so look for our Bazaar on the Oculus Store. B A Z A A R. Store. That's right. Okay. Um, and check out our game there. And if you want to get updates, uh, TempleGatesGames.com.
is there any preview video or anything? Yep. Where is that? At the website? Yes. Or on YouTube? That's all. Well, it is on YouTube, but you can get to it best on the website. Cool. Well, congratulations on your upcoming launch. Thank you. I'm um, looking forward to seeing it. Now, okay, now I got to get, get a phone. Not this iPhone, girl. I got to get a, a <laughs> Samsung. So it's an S5 or S6. Is that how? That's right. Just those two? Yeah. Um, and the, that's only 99 bucks mm -hmm. for the gear. That's yeah. not too bad. Yeah. Hmm. Holidays are it's gonna be an interesting holiday season because of experiences like this. Yeah. Thank you so much for making time for us today. Well, thank you so much. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And thank all of you out there for watching us on Games Beat Online. Let's see.